All right, I've started recording um, because the second I saw you here on Skype and I saw your fancy space background and you're our, and I'm like, should I record? And you're like, all right, my man, my man, celebrity Josh, I'm just happy to be here. I'm like, okay, I got to record because I don't want to. <laughs> I got to want to miss a gem, a single moment of this, the energy you're bringing to this. Um, so welcome to, yes, this is the Celebrity Josh Show. Uh, I don't really like the name. Maybe you can help me come up with a new name. And I'm Josh Rackless, and I don't like my own name either. So we can work on that. Uh, but it is. Oh, and here's my new thing. I'm going to say it's Friday, August 6th, 2021, because... I feel like people should know what the date is in case they're listening to this in the future. And they're like, well, how come he hasn't mentioned like the pandemic or the alien invasion or whatever's happened? Because, well, it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. It's just August 6th, people. Hopefully it's still relevant to you. So uh, my guest today is Dominique Brightmon. And if you can't, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can see that he's got uh, like sparks behind him and he's got his dot com above him. That's all very cool. And uh, And if you can't see that, well, you can hear it, uh, so deal with it. All right, <laughs> there's my intro, and we're out of time. Thanks for coming, Dominique. No, I'm just Woo! kidding. See you next <laughs> week, baby. <laughs> <laughs> same time, same channel. The One Minute Podcast. All right, so do you go by Dominique Brightmon or Dom Brightmon? Hey, it's all yours, man. If Dom's easier to say, then it's A-OK. Well, you've got DomBrightmon.com as your your uh, your website address but of course you i mean you want to make a domain name as short as possible yeah man especially your... nowadays <laughs> when it's short it's at your space i think the goldfish have his beat now thanks to the smartphones <laughs> well, well that's partly why i want to change my name because um you know like it's josh rackless well first of all it's hard to spell uh hard to pronounce and it's also it's like three syllables i i'm so jealous of people like sting or pink it's like one <laughs> syllable one word I feel like people are more likely to reference you. They might be like, oh, I love that Sting album, but you're not going to go, you know, I want to see that Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's like, no, okay. I, it's by the, by the second syllable. Like, I know who you're talking about. Why do we have to keep, why do you have to say Ariana Grande? It's like, Ari, I don't know. I just, I feel like, yeah, time is, imagine, imagine if I shortened my name and just, I became really famous. It would actually be saving years of life for people like those extra syllables, they would everybody would have you know millions of people saying my name. If it shortens it, I'll be like doing everyone a favor, and we could use that time more productively than saying my name. Oh, but you can at least play some Destiny's Child. Say my name every time. Oh, <laughs> Folks that's say your name. <laughs> Why didn't I come up with it? Say my name. What is that song about? Like, is it is it? Are they like making love and they're saying say my name? Is what is? Do we know? To be honest, I forgot. I just remember the chorus like every other song on the planet. <laughs> I guess none of us know what any of those songs are. <laughs> we, we could sit here and try to analyze Cardi B or Megan the Stallion, but we no, might get not, nowhere. No, 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 not, not them. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> against them, but no. <laughs> there was, there's this uh, sort of conservative podcaster I've been listening to. What's his name? Matt somebody. And he has this segment where he analyzes rap lyrics and treats them like great poetry and stuff. And well, there, there was a song, oh, I forget who this guy was, I never heard of him, it's another rapper named, and his song was called We Get Paid or something, and he was just distilling the essence of it. And, and sometimes Ben Shapiro will, will analyze, like, uh, the WAP song or something like that. It's, it's just, it's, it's beautiful, it's like Shakespeare. So if, uh, so if I was meeting you in an elevator, and, you'd be, and I'd be like, who are you, what's, what's your deal, like, what's your, what's your pitch, what's your summary? Sure thing. Name's Dominic Dom Brightman, host of the Going North podcast, and I'm a certified self-leadership trainer that likes to coach, empower, and equip others to share their stories because I myself have learned how to take pieces of my life and turn them into stories and create my own piece of immortality and to help others to do the same. So that's probably the pitch version of it. <laughs> and if you want the longer version, I could go into the longer version too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we've got, we've got as much time as you've got. I've got no life. Um, <laughs> you got life, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm trying. I'm trying. Doing these interviews um, is like a little break for me because I can, I can, like, I have to talk to you and, and think and stuff. And so it takes me out of my own head, which is normally just like, oh my God, what have I done with my life? What, what's happening? Uh, what's the point of anything? <laughs> hey, man, you're doing good work, dude. I mean, celebrity Josh show. I mean, hey, it ain't your favorite name, but it's a name to start with. Most was... don't even start, period. So. Well, that's the thing. That's what you learn. Like, uh, I mean, you, you don't, I mean, I've, I've been listening to a lot of 
people like Kathy Heller who talks about, uh, you know, the only way to learn something is to just do it. And you don't know where it's going to go. You just start and it turns out, oh, I was doing a cooking blog, but now I become a coach teaching people how to make money with blogs. Or James Altucher is always saying, yeah, just experiment, see where it goes. That's the way to skip the line. That's the name of his book. And yeah, Celebrity Josh, I guess, I oh, I came up with that like, ah, I don't know, 15 years ago, I needed a name for uh, another team. I was working as a copywriter. Another team in, in the ad agency said, hey, we have an idea for you to sell Orville Redenbacher select white popcorn. We want you to be like a celebrity hunter going to the film festival asking celebrities to try it. And I, was, I want to come up with a cool name for myself. And I was like, I don't know, the celebrity hunter and all that was taken on YouTube. And then I thought, oh, well, Crocodile Dundee is named Crocodile Dundee because he hunts crocodiles. So I could be Celebrity Josh. And it kind of means I'm joshing around with celebrities, too. And uh, and then years later, I sort of was trying to come up with a domain name. And I decided, hey, I've, I could use that. And then I wound up interviewing celebrities on the red carpet. At the time, I was using joshracklist.today as my website because some guy in Indonesia stole joshracklist.com and was holding it hostage. Um, Ouch. Yeah. And then, yeah, just lately I've been like, ah, celebrity Josh, what does that even mean? I don't know. Uh, so I've been back to Josh Rackless, because at least if you Google that, I'm the only Josh Rackless. But if you Google celebrity Josh, you're going to get every celebrity named Josh. Um, <laughs> and so Josh Brolin or Josh Hartnett. Or, ugh, I hate that there's other Joshes. And then um, lately I've been like, no, no, I got to come up with someone else. So I'm, I'm working with uh, Spark the Genius. Because it's like kind of Tyler the Creator, Charlemagne the God, Megan the Stallion, Spark the Genius. And it works as uh, a mantra. Like, I want to tell you, I'm going to teach you how to spark the genius. Like, get something going, start something, a good idea kind of thing. So it works two ways. And I also want something visual so you could, like, draw a spark. And then when I typed the word spark into, like, to see what emoji would come up, it's a little spark that looks like an S. I'm like, oh, my God, that's so perfect. It could be my logo. Nice. Um, so I haven't started using that yet. Uh, because it's probably ridiculous. Uh, I'll, I'll probably just keep trying to come up with names forever, and I'll just be Josh Rackless forever. Um, but that's, yeah, that's where I am right now. Were you born Dominique Breitmond? Yeah, that's the good thing. Been born with a name. Funny enough, yeah. if you want, you could probably try hashtag Celebrity Spark if that might not be taken yet. <laughs> Ooh, not bad, not bad. Yeah, I keep looking for different different angles. Like, I, I was looking up what Spark domain, you know, spark.com is taken, but I could get spark.army. And then I look up sparkarmy.com and like, oh, that's some drink or something. So everything, that's the thing. Everything's kind of taken. Like even people, even celebrities can't, like even Cardi B can't get at Cardi B on Instagram. She has to be I am Cardi B. So I feel like maybe it's not even worth, it's, it's probably not worth stressing about it too much. It's like when I was in high school, I spent like months and years trying to come up with a good name for a band rather than actually learning guitar and, and writing songs. <laughs> so, but, uh, and then I think Gary V was even talking recently about it. names don't matter, you know, Google, what the heck does that mean? But it, you know, it, it takes on a meaning. And then I was looking up the, the history of Amazon. I actually am fascinated. I, I look up every celebrity's name. Like how did Snoop Dogg come up with his name? Where did Jay-Z come from? Beyonce was lucky. She's just, that's just her name. And Drake, was, <laughs> Drake was just his middle name. Also, it seems like it's kind of if you're a rock star, you can have a cool name like Drake or Bono. But if you're a comedian, you kind of look like a weirdo. If you're like, oh, my name is Spark. It's like, really? That's trying a bit, <laughs> trying a bit hard. Uh, it's, but well, Cedric the Entertainer, he seems to do it. But even when I say that, I'm like, that's, that's a bit of a long name. That's a bit of a, oh, wait, how do I ah, decline? I'm going to put my phone on Do Not Disturb because there we go. Because it's actually coming through my computer, too. It's always ringing. It's always oh. ringing. Uh, so you're lucky to be born Dom Brightman. What uh, what city are you in? Ah, the land of charm, crime, and crab cakes, Baltimore, Maryland, <laughs> in the U.S. Oh. of A. <laughs> is that is that on their sign as you drive in? Welcome to the land of charm, crime, and crab cakes? Nope, but that's just the three things that Baltimore is known for. Well, three of the main things. <laughs> uh, well, that's all right. And yeah. uh, and so, uh, yeah, so what's your story? Like, how did you get to to be the storyteller coach guy? Yeah, funny enough, it actually started, I'd say, probably my teenage years when, you know, the magical years of puberty happen and, you know, things start to drop and then the voice just gets deeper and it's like, hey, this dude has a great radio voice. Right. And I get that ever since I was freaking, my goodness, like 14 from right. being in a church saying, like basically leading worship, saying prayers and taking part of plays and playing roles with a lot of lines to being able to get to public speaking courses, a couple, one in high school, one in college, and then finally after leaving college, joining 
Toastmaster to sharpen my craft. And through there, just really just sharing information I've learned and read and applied in my own life and sharing with other people. That's one of the greatest things about this age nowadays is the fact that we have access to so many things that can teach us so many things to help us really embrace our dreams. And one of the ways to do that is by reading great books by people who've probably taken years of research, study, practice, and heck, even some of their own personal stories into a little small investment package of like $20 or so. And really just reading that, seeing if it applies to your own life. And it applied to my own life because back in, wow, 2012, yep, 2012, classic year where in America we thought uh, the world was going to end. So even parts of the world thought the world was going to end. But all that really happened is that we just lost Twinkies for a month. And when we lost those Twinkies for a month, <laughs> it was Wait, like, 2012, oh. what was 2012? Yeah, I remember the End Times Prophecy. There's this movie that was out called 2012 where they thought, oh, oh the world's going to end the mind calendar. has to right. reset. <laughs> right, right, with John Cusack, yes. It's like, oh, we got to die. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just reading James L. Tucher. Uh, he posted an Instagram thing, uh, I guess, in May, and it was a list of all the times we thought we're going to die, and it was like, you know, the the, the 70s. Um, I don't know what it was. Uh some, we're going to run out of oil, and then the 80s, global warming's going to kill us, and the 90s, whatever. And then, yeah, 2012 was like the Mayan calendar's running out, and then it was the most recent COVID's going to kill us all. But that kind of uh, <laughs> that kind of got him because uh, he, he was really cocky. He's like, oh, I don't need a vaccine or whatever. And then his podcast uh, this week I was listening, he's like, okay, my wife and I got COVID, and we almost died. <laughs> it's like, okay, so so maybe not that <laughs> as much. Um, but uh, but yeah okay so that was yeah that's true that was supposed to be the end of the world and we lost Twinkies we're, we're what happened with the Twinkies yeah they just stopped producing them I have oh. no idea why and they I guess it was some kind of contract issue or something hmm. and they just stopped producing them for like a couple months and then they just reappeared out of nowhere yeah, I guess I'll it was I'll bet somebody bought the brand or something because like like somebody like Ty Lopez who's buying up everything like. Uh, I don't know, Pier One or, or Franklin Mint, Radio Shack. He sees all these brands that he thinks are worth something. And so if you look at his Instagram bio, it lists all these companies from the 80s that he now owns. And he's very proud of this. And who knows if he's making money or whatever. He's putting them online. So, okay, so somebody's making Twinkies again. That's good. But, <laughs> but at yeah, the time, man. you're like, okay, uh, what was going on with you? Yeah, what was going on with me is the fact that I really, really had no direction in life at the time because it was like the second to the last semester of my college years like going for my IT degree and I realized wow I really like it's okay but <laughs> had some setbacks going on where my father I, I have some aging parents my father at the time he was going through dementia and on my 21st birthday got into a car accident and then the cupcake kept getting more sprinkles because a month after I was doing a part-time job while holding down full-time college courses and my boss called me at the time. I was like, hey, like, you sure you're all right here? Because I was screwing up a lot in different areas. One of them was just some miscommunication issues going on with a fellow colleague. And it was like, hey, like, I got some new employees coming in and they're going to be looking to you as a leader. And subconsciously, like, the word leader just stayed in my mind because next thing I know, a couple weeks later, I was shelving books. And one of the books I saw on the shelf was The Five Loves of Leadership by John Maxwell. And that book inspired me to become a voracious reader, reading a bunch of books and actually falling in love with reading again because grade school, they give you books you don't want to read and force you to read them if you want to get a good grade. And it's like, I don't want to read this crap. <laughs> and yeah. just forgetting that there's other stuff out there that I can choose to read for myself and choose to take advice from and choose to advance from. And that just set me on the path to falling in love with reading, personal development, and eventually becoming an author myself, especially since a lot of the stuff I was reading was just the self-help, the leadership, psychology, persuasion, sales, stuff like that. What you put yourself around the most, what you'll eventually become. So I was putting myself around other people who are all about personal development and making themselves better. And a couple of them, I started getting around other authors and I too eventually became an author. So kind of like that whole classic, the five friends you hang around, <laughs> if, if you're the fifth person, the four, four or five friends you hang around. If you're the fifth person in that group, you're most likely going to be the person in the group. Like, heck, even looking back, my closest friends in high school, they were they were pretty skinny. They had a little muscle, but most of them were pretty skinny. 
And I eventually became skinny myself because I was a fat kid growing up at the time until I got to my friends around like eighth grade in middle school and then kept them through high school. And then as the years rolled around and we grew apart a bit because of our schedules, because adulting can do that to you. I got around some other folks who were a little bit more on the heavyweight side of the game. And I, too, <laughs> became a little heavier. And, of That's course, funny. COVID-19, mm-hmm. with the 19 part being the pounds of people probably came from the dark pandemic of being in house all day. Yeah, I kept the, the heavyweight status. So, yeah, man, it's been one heck of a journey of just like like growing up in Baltimore and just really just having a life of just really just having that great voice that I was was born with and getting that encouragement for the people to really take that further and getting some public speaking classes to sharpen my skills to deliver more messages and then just adding some more information knowledge to my repertoire so that way when I speak I have something important to say as opposed to saying a bunch of nothing like some of the mumble rappers we may have today <laughs> yes which we've already discussed exactly <laughs> mumble rap is that what it's called i feel yeah maybe that, that's basically it because yeah, when the guy was reviewing we paid or whatever he said hold on a second i'm actually gonna have to ref like look up the lyrics here because i can't tell what he's saying at all <laughs> yes <laughs> kind of funny and i when i went for my little jog today uh on the way back i, I saw a woman i know in the restaurant window so i was talking to her and i was like yeah i'm just trying to trying to lose some weight and she's like oh we've all got the covid body i'm like yeah i guess but i feel like I haven't, I, my, I had the COVID body before COVID actually. That's, that's the big, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, oh, maybe I can make that my stand up act. So I, I won like first prize of, of the night in a contest a couple of weeks ago for round one of a comedy club contest. And I got to do round two in a few days. And I'm like, what am I going to write about this time? And I'm like, maybe food, maybe losing weight, maybe trying to get sleep. I don't know. Uh, but thank you. You're doing the, uh, the arm thing. What is that? Just uh, cheering you on for go, Josh, man. Get yeah. first place for round one, baby. That's right. Well, I knew that's what you're doing. I just, I was thinking, is that called something? No, I guess not. It's just called going like that with your arm. That Did you ever see there was a, oh, what's that guy's name? He's like uh, Eddie Murphy's, he's, he had a talk show years ago and he would, I don't know, the dog house, I think he would call the audience and he'd go, ooh, ooh or something. <laughs> I, never actually saw the show. I don't know why, why that just came into my head anyways. <laughs> uh, anybody see coming to america too is that already out i don't know oh yeah that came out wow i think april maybe sooner yeah it was a oh. uh, yeah you well yeah definitely have to see the first one before the second one definitely if, to appreciate the second one <laughs> yeah okay that's good to know yeah i i haven't i don't think i've seen either i haven't seen any movies in years uh but but what i like to do is is sort of do a double bill like if you can see a see like a movie original and then see a sequel or like a cool, like watch the original Nosferatu and then watch the John Malkovich version about the making of the movie or something like that. That kind of stuff is fun to do. So maybe maybe someday I'll watch Blade Runner and then the new Blade Runner. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so you got thin with your thin friends and then big again with your big friends. And then you were trying to do something with your voice. So Toastmasters, yeah, I started, I've heard about that over the years. I've had friends that did it and I never did it. But then uh, I started going to some meetings. There, there was some Facebook ad for like, it was like a talk from this guy who will teach you how to make money from public speaking. And it turns out he was a guest at a Toastmasters meeting that I joined. And then oh, I'm like, oh, so I was joining a bunch of meetings over Zoom. But and it turned them there's a lot of clubs even within Ottawa. And so I was going to different clubs, and then they were all like, okay, you're going to join, you're going to sign up. I'm like, oh, I, I can't commit to paying and having to come every week and actually having to do the proper work so I I never, <laughs> I never did it so I feel bad but uh, you know I, I, I it's it's funny because I I, I want to make friends and I feel like I should go to this Toastmasters meeting and oh I, there's something called creative mornings and I I always want to go to those meetings and oh I got to and I was taking stand-up comedy classes on zoom in the winter and I'm like oh I want to sign up for more and it's like because I'm just anything I can do to get out of my own head and improve my skills but at the same time I'm like well how much of this is procrastination like I you know, I'm going to another Toastmasters meeting for two hours. Should I just be sitting down and writing my stuff? And so I'm torn. But but all of it, you know, even even the class I took this winter, because I think it helped because I, I didn't get past the first round last year in that comedy contest. And so I've learned a little bit about, I guess, shortening my jokes and stuff like that. So uh, so that's good. So then so what happened? Did you like, you know, did you go into voice acting? Did you try to do a, a radio show or a podcast back then? Or what were you doing? 
Yeah, so with that, was able to start a podcast about a good four years ago at the time of this recording. So about 2017, September, launched the Going North podcast, where any of you authors all over the globe to help listeners realize that success is tangible, especially if you're trying to write and publish a book of your own, because a lot of the folks I interview, they're regular folks who have nine to five jobs doing as a side also all the way to folks who've written New York Times and USA Today best-selling books that are doing it full-time or at least they have their own full-time business with writing books and just getting folks from diverse backgrounds learning from them and just giving them a platform to get their stories heard and heck it even helps me grow better as a listener and as a podcast host and heck season get my voice out there even more as well because another thing about podcasting is that one of the major things that folks recommend you do to grow your podcast audience is to guest on other people's podcasts so it helped me to really just not only create that platform create that space for folks to get their stories heard and sometimes even have conversations that may go deeper than they expect or even deeper than what i expect and then they leave feeling great about it and then folks just catching on bit by bit and just enjoying the stories they hear from people that they don't normally hear about. Cause like authors, like folks may think it's like, Oh yeah, these best selling authors, big names, but it's like big names are great. But a lot of them, especially for interviews, they may have told their stories millions of times as opposed to regular everyday folks who may not be as famous, but they still have that hunger, that drive for more and always getting better. And they still may have a fire that may be burning even hotter than those folks who, are like really famous in the world so that's really the benefit of the podcast and that's what i've been doing with the voices just advancing others to advance myself because in this world like if you help enough other people get what they want you'll eventually get what you want i think that's what tony robbins says isn't it just keep giving and or maybe gary v says that just give out information help people it'll come back to you eventually like somehow and build your tribe all of that yeah, and that's, I mean, I've been talking, I was researching for years, how do I do a podcast? I took a podcast class for a whole day. I went to all these podcast conferences in Toronto. I met with a guy, I was like, how do you get something on iTunes? Like, I just couldn't figure it out. And then finally, about a year ago, I just sat down. I was like, okay, enough of this. Let me just, just before the pandemic, I was like, let me just sign up for hosting. And I just took the audio from a little video I made of me talking about the new Indiana Jones movie. And I was like, okay, I'm going to figure out how to make this a file that I can get on a podcast, whatever. Took a couple of days to figure it out. I'm like, okay, now at least I can do it. And then I've only like interviewed like 10 people over the past year. Cause I was like, oh yeah, like I just wasn't doing it hard. But then, um, yeah, I got an email from this pod match website a couple of weeks ago or something. And I'm like, oh, it's actually people who want to talk. So I've already done <laughs> for this week i haven't even gotten around to posting them yet i'm like oh i gotta get this done um but it's interesting because yeah like a lot of people i was randomly talking to on instagram or whatever they're like oh why would i why would you want to interview me or what would i talk about so yeah a lot of people don't want to talk or (laughs) and but then there are people who do want to talk so you might as well focus on those people and and again i don't even know what my podcast is originally i thought okay i want to be like mark maron or joe rogan i'm just gonna interview celebrities or like be a, a perez hilton um and then that's not, I mean, I could interview at red carpets, like if I got a media pass, but most celebrities can't just come on your show, even if they want to, they'll be, oh, I got to talk to my agent and see like, you know, they don't know what, what this is and what it would do with their reputation. And, and also, yeah, what would they even talk about? So, and then the more I've been doing it, like just, yeah, talking to people like you, but what do you do? How did you do it? I'm starting to think, okay, what is the point? Like, is it funny? I mean, it does turn out to be funny a bit, but it's also kind of useful, I guess. So maybe in a way it's a combination of like life coaching, advice on entrepreneurship or creativity, but also in a funny sense. And maybe that's my unique thing because a lot of people interview kind of entrepreneur types, but it's not hilarious. And then there's funny (laughs) shows like Conan O'Brien that are funny, but what's the point? Um, And so, yeah, maybe this is a combination. I'm like the funny Tony Robbins or I I don't know. I don't know, but maybe it's just me Or, or maybe it doesn't matter. You know, it's like if I talk to somebody like you for half an hour, an hour, it's like, I would have wanted to talk to you anyway. So if we record it and put it out there in the world, maybe somebody wants to listen. So that's okay, you know. Oh. What do you What do you think your your goal with the whole thing is? Like, do you did you did you say you wrote a book and you know you can use the podcast to promote the book or, um, I don't know. Have you thought about, or is it just fun while it's happening? I don't know. A uh, combination of both because my podcast going north, it actually started off as a joke since funny was talked about. A colleague greeted me one day. He's like, hey, how's it going? I'm pretty sure someone's asked you before, Josh. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Yeah. And 
it's like, oh, be like, hey, doing good, doing well, or something like that, a classic answer. But for me, since I like puns, I decided, you know what, let me just be literal, too, and just say I'm going north. And she just looked at me and was like, okay. And another colleague overheard, and she just busted out laughing and spit out her water because it was just so random. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so dark, Gordy. And that, funny enough, that one experience led to me doing that more often than other people. And I kept saying going north so much that it became the title of my first ever book, Going North, Tips and Techniques to Advance Yourself, all about advancing and then taking the title of the book and then turning it into a podcast and... The goal with the podcast is to go over a thousand authors across the globe. And right now, last I checked, I'm about 455 authors in so far with over 386 official episodes. So it's been going on for four straight years, just having fun with it, learning from other people, giving a platform for folks to get their voices heard. And the thing is, like it, when I originally started out with the show, and you may even come across this too in your journey with your podcast is that I originally was just going to have self-published authors, especially in the nonfiction space, all about the whole professional setting, the professional development. But then, funny enough, I was doing a book. I was vending at a book event in Baltimore, and one lady, she was uh, doing her day job, and she had a lunch break, and she was walking around taking pictures with the authors at every table because she herself was an author. And when I had the flyer on my table that I had a podcast, she was like, hey, so you accept the guest? Can I be on the show? And she did this after she took my picture and gave me a 60-second Instagram story opportunity on her own platform to promote myself and the event. And I was like, well, sure, why not? And I was like, man, like I don't really do fiction authors, but hey, what the heck, I'll go ahead and do it. And then just kept bringing in authors to write both fiction. And I never thought I'd interview a romance a novelist, and next thing I know, one of my co-authors last year, she has a pit, she has a romance novel that she pen named under a different name, and we're both in the same co-author project. So I'm like, man, I didn't want to have a romance novelist on my darn show, but you know what? She's good people to have her on, and now it's like I probably got like two more romance novelists on my show because they still have something to share. So the thing is, like, if if someone's an author, they have a book of their own, they want to get the stories out there. Let a hundred flowers blossom because you never know who you'll meet because they may have interesting stories to share and you may get something out of the conversation you may not have gotten before. So that's the goal with the show is really just to interview a thousand different authors across the globe to give them a platform to share the stories and learn from them. And to help continue other listeners, the audience to get some stuff out of it too and realize that, hey, success is tangible. Yeah, yeah. Did you say you're in the same project as her or what did you say? Yep, the same book project. We were in a book project last year called Crappy to Happy, Secret Stories of Transformational Joy. Right. And her day job, she's a registered nurse, but she also has two, she had two other books before that. One was a romance novel. I believe the book was called, I, I think it was like Walking a Tuscan Sun or something. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was about IBS. And then she Irritable had Irritable bowel syndrome? Yep, because that, she did. That wasn't a yep. romance novel, or it no, was. No, 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 that that wasn't the romance <laughs> novel. That was a separate <laughs> nonfiction book she wrote as herself. But the romance novel was under a pen name, and then she had a little kids book. I forgot what it was called, but there was like bees on the cover or something, a busy bee or something, mm -hmm. and a kids book for for kids under her real name. So yeah, it was a heck of an interesting experience. She's uh, her name is Diane Vick. She's great people. Cool. Yeah, no, she sounds great. I love people like that that just do it. They're just like, I want to write a romance novel. I'm going to do it. I'm going to write a kid's book. I'm going to do it. She reminds me of my mom. I've been living with my parents for the pandemic uh, after I sold my condo just before the pandemic. And uh, yeah, like she's up every morning and she's done a painting or she's written a little kid's book or whatever. And I'm always like, you know, by noon, I've gone for a jog maybe. And I'm like, just not not getting things done. So people like that very much inspire me. So good for her. And yeah, romance is fun. And and you can, yeah, you can self-publish now on Amazon. You can just type it up and be like, here's my book. Like, you don't need a, a and that, you know, James Altucher says he self-publishes on Amazon a lot now. And I, I know a woman who said she just would write, like, short stories about Christmas or something. And and people love Christmas stories, so she'll write one. And, and I think she sold it for a dollar or something. But she had 14,000 people buy it because it's, like, romance mm. of Christmas or something. So you, you never know. Just 
uh, Altucher just calls them experiments. Just do it, right? You know, write a one page thing, throw it up on Amazon, see what happens. Start a <laughs> podcast, see what happens. Like a lot of people, like years ago, I had an ad on Craigslist for like, I'll teach you how to do creative things. And or any of my friends who would just message me, they were like, what do I do? And I'm like, well, just start. Like, okay, you want to be a writer? Here, try writing something. You know, write, write a little column about your life today or whatever, and then try submitting it to a community newspaper or a blog or anything, like just to start doing it. And they're like, oh, let's work. I'm like, well, <laughs> everybody wants to do it without actually doing it at all. But I know it's hard. Like, I've always like, I'm going to be a comedian. But now I, I'm t I, hate, I hate having to sit down and think about, I can write jokes, but I, I can't think about what to talk about. It's like, oh, do I talk about whatever? And it's like, it's just torture. So I can see why it's very much easier to just be like, man, we'll just watch Netflix today for a few hours. Or, <laughs> But then I'm not really getting ahead. I don't know. I don't know what the point of any of it is. Um, but that's very cool. And then, so, you know, so in 2012, you were getting skinny, you were getting chubby again. And then, so did you stay, are you still working in IT? Or like, what are you what are you doing the rest of your time? Yeah, so funny enough, uh, actually got an IT degree and didn't get an IT job, but I got a full time job as a librarian, basically. <laughs> and that's funny enough, that's still my day job too. So like, when I'm not recording podcasts, writing books, and doing some leadership development for other companies, I'm basically in the library helping folks not just find books, but also find employment and also getting their resumes hooked up and also with kids too. Like the other thing is like libraries, especially public libraries, they're community centers now more than anything else because a lot of folks, especially during the pandemic last year, we had to pivot to do virtual programs over Zoom. We also had to expand our Wi-Fi to reach all the parking lots of all the 19 libraries in the Baltimore County area. So that way, even though folks couldn't be in the building during the lockdown, they could still drive to the parking lot. And if they have a laptop of their own, they can connect to our Wi-Fi and use that. And also before the pandemic started, we had around a good 200 Google Chromebooks that folks can check out for one to three weeks. And since the pandemic started, we added another 300 to our original 200 because we got those four years ago and some of them got lost and some of them got a little destroyed because <laughs> mm -hmm. some folks can be rough with the stuff yep. and even getting Wi-Fi hotspots too on top of that thanks to the additional funding. So the libraries there are filled with gold and not just the classic books by folks who may be dead or alive, but also especially public libraries where it's helping folks in the community get some resource, whether it's movies to try to, decompress and de-stress and try to get their mind off of things in the world or for those who just need the Wi-Fi, need the technology to print their documents out or just to use that to get themselves in a better position. Because the thing is, like a lot of folks, the pandemic last year helped a lot of folks realize that no one's truly invincible. Like heck, even the guy you mentioned earlier about how he's documenting everything he survived and then out of nowhere catching that darn CV-19 crap nonsense. And right, exactly. It was... It's like, yeah, we it, it helped us realize, like, hey, even though we may be tough, we still got to go through tough situations to really remind us of how tough we can be and also remind us that even though we're still tough, we can still be vulnerable, too, and we can always succumb to the evils of the world and the sicknesses of the world. We just have to heal and recover from that. So that's basically what I'm also doing now in addition to everything else. Wow, that's so great. I love libraries so much. Like as a kid, I used to, or in high school, I'd, I'd go there, I'd just bike over and I'd just grab a whole bunch of short story, but like anthologies for science fiction or horror books like The Omen and I would, or magazines. I'd just sit there and read all day. I just loved it so much. And then after college, I was living in a house that was right across from a library. And I kept telling myself I should go over there and volunteer to read to the kids. I can be like Robin Williams and Mrs. Doubtfire and like be a funny entertainer. I just never did it. I don't, I can't remember why. And then even if I'm in the library lately, like I was in a couple of years ago in a small town, friend dropped me. I forget why. I think I went there to try to use the Wi-Fi because I realized, like I sold my condo a couple of years ago and I thought oh, I'll just be a digital nomad and I can work from anywhere. But Wi-Fi doesn't work ever. Like in, even in hotels, it's usually pretty slow. And if you're in a small town, it doesn't matter if you have a house, like it, the Wi-Fi is very slow. And I realized it's, yeah, it is hard to, to get work done. I'm like, yeah, where would I, if I was living in a van, how would I, how could I do a podcast like this? All that stuff, so I didn't realize. Um, 
and then yeah i mean i'm still using my 2013 macbook pro that my work gave me when i left my job and you know so i can see how very easily people could not have a computer or not have wi-fi and so that's all useful and and as a community center too yeah somebody helping with a resume or it's just all so cozy and it just makes me happy to to see that people do like libraries and do read because a lot of times you I'll spend time with people who don't seem to care about reading or, and it's like, ah, oh, it makes me sad, but it's nice to see when people do and that libraries are still there. And my, my parents still use libraries. They're checking out books every day. And my mom gets audio books from the library and all this stuff that I didn't even realize they offer. Cause I haven't been to a library since, you know, for 30 years or something. So it's all very inspiring. And it's interesting too, cause I'm always like, would you even want to read a book from a long, like, you know, you go back 20, 30 years and all these characters, it's like, well, why aren't you using the internet? Oh, they didn't have an internet or they didn't have an iPhone. And it's like, do stories even still matter anymore? But I think they probably do. It, it like, even when I used to go to cottages as a kid, like we'd go to a relative's cottage. I loved like seeing a shelf of books in the corner and it's like, oh, here's some stuff to read. It's like an old thriller or, or I, I liked books like uh, Coma. What was that? Michael Crichton would write sort of these thrillers like Jurassic Park, that kind of stuff I would love. And or the or John Grissom, like uh, the the firm. I read that when I was walking around Europe when I was twenty and stuff. Anyways, I'm getting all nostalgic now. But that's that's a very cool job. I even I think I was researching it. Like, how could I become a librarian? Like, be because it would it would combine my love of books and reading and learning, but also just being around people. Because I I wish now I had become a teacher or a professor. I see all these university professors tweeting even today about oh my students told me not to use periods in my uh, my text because that's too aggressive or negative or and, and I'm like okay um, oh, God, but I'm like no. I wish I was no. dealing with students and stuff like no. <laughs> no, I know I don't I, I left I tweeted back I said oh so that what are you how are you supposed to write things uh, I wrote like one long sentence the whole tweet long with no punctuation to make my point um, I don't know why yeah it's all ridiculous but but even, you know, my niece and nephew, uh, they're nine and seven, and my niece is listening to my stand-up act and telling me that's funny or that's not funny and stuff. So I love interacting with, with kids. I love interacting with anybody, like just of any age. It just makes me – that like I hosted talk radio for a little bit, maybe like 15 years ago, and when people call would call in and say they like the show or whatever, it just makes me cry. Like it's like, oh, my God, I'm reaching, touching people. They like it. Um and even some random woman in the States who seems to be like a scientist. She messaged me on Instagram a few months ago saying, I, I love your stories. And it just gives me permission to, to go after my dreams. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Because I'm always talking about I'm depressed and I don't know what the point of it. She's like, yeah, but it's, it's nice to know that other people are struggling. Like, like it's comforting or something. And some of that is her permission. And I understand because whenever I see somebody saying they're sad or depressed or whatever, at least I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm, I feel like I'm not missing out. Like everybody's kind of going through crap. So it kind of makes me feel like it's okay to to be going through crap too. And, and just, you know, like it doesn't matter who, who you are. Like everybody's got their, their crap, I guess. Maybe that should be the name of my book. Everybody's got their crap. There you go. You got it right there because it's true, man. Yeah. So so you got your podcast and you're doing the librarian thing. And that's, that's basically, and you sort of trained at Toastmasters. And then, uh, yeah. And so if I went to dombrightmon.com, what would I find? Oh, yeah, you'll find the podcast itself, a long little bio about myself, and also a free gift if you subscribe to my monthly newsletter, Northbound Success, where I share 21 tips for those who want to start, grow, and manage a podcast of their own. Because, I mean, I'm still alive podcasting for <laughs> four years now. Interviewed yeah. over 400 authors and still get at least anywhere between two to five pitches a week. And so it's like, hey, I guess something's working. So might as well share what I know now, because that's the other thing, too, in this era of imposter syndrome, where truth be told, to avoid imposter syndrome, and I got this from my buddy Mark Kumar, is the fact that the best way to avoid imposter syndrome is just not to pay attention to what other people are doing. Pay attention to what you yourself are doing and comparing yourself to the person of the past are you better than what you were three years ago five years ago ten years ago heck even last month like where are you now compared to last month is the josh from july <laughs> you should probably yeah. call june and july the josh special muffs especially if that's what your birthday buffs yeah, actually yeah. i think november's your birthday month right yeah how'd you know that I actually did some research, looked at your stuff a bit. <laughs> I, usually wow. try to, I usually try to do some kind of research before I go to someone else's 
platform to show respect to him and just uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, man, <laughs> I, I feel like that's kind of a backward, uh, like a little uh, a jab at me. But well, it's funny. No, um, it's not. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I did. I um, I was on a red carpet a couple of years ago interviewing this woman uh, who she's on this show called um, Working Moms. She's like wrote. I think I don't know if she acts. She must act in it. Yeah, she's the star and writer and whatever. And uh but I was just interviewing a bunch of people. Somebody had asked me for this website to go interview. It was the Directors Guild Awards. And so I was like, oh, what, what are you here for? What are you nominated for? And she's like, haven't you done your research? I'm like, uh, you know, I'm just, she's like, wow, maybe you should research this. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it was an awkward interview, but I still tried to be funny. <laughs> uh, and then, but then I was listening again. I keep referencing James Altucher just because uh, I discovered him a few months ago on a webinar. And then it occurred to me to look him up again recently. And so I listen to his podcast. He's got a little, like, he's got tons of episodes where he just talks about random things, but he started a little mini series within the podcast called I Will Make You a Millionaire. And I'm like, well, I love coaching sessions like that, where it's like practical and he'll hear what somebody's working on and talk them how to monetize it. So I've listened to all of those. And then I just searched his book, Skip the Line, and I started listening to every interview he's done with different podcasts just to hear. And a lot of it is the same stories, but he's, you know, varies it up different times. What was my point? Oh, and one of his things he was talking about how to interview people like that's a skill um and he says larry king would his thing was he wouldn't inter like research people at all he would just go into it cold and then that was like how he liked to do it to get to know the person uh as he was talking and i thought okay well that'll be my thing it worked for larry king that's legit because i feel like i mean sometimes i'll go in and, and read a bit and then know but i don't know i feel like the person themselves will know more well, it depends. I mean, they might not even know. Like, yeah, if you do your research and you know things to ask, you go, hey, I saw this on your album cover. Or I discovered this. And like, oh, I didn't know you know that. Um, but uh, actually, there's this series of videos on Instagram. It's like there's some interviewer called Narfog or Nar Narf or something, Narwhal, who shocks celebrities when he's like, hey, didn't you do this as a kid? How did you know that? And they're just, just <laughs> blown away. Anyway, but, uh, but yeah, so I mean, I guess I could vary it. But I feel like, you know, it's hard to know until you talk to somebody like everybody's gonna have a little bio like i'm a life coach and i wrote a book and i'm like okay you know it's it's and then i wonder if it'll just cloud up my mind too much because then i'll forget what i read or was this somebody else i read this about and then i won't be in the moment so i feel like i don't know and also it's all about you know time efficiency i guess if you just learn about somebody as you're talking then that's the time you don't have to spend an hour before but but yeah no it's that's very respectful of you to to do a little a little Googling and, uh, you know, I'll expect a present in the mail from you in November. Um, it's a big birthday for me coming up. It'll be my 49th birthday. Oh, and, wow. uh, and that's scary because I don't want to be 50. Um, and so and I figured I, I realized lately, like, OK, three months into my 49th year or whatever you call it, 50th year. That's basically when I was conceived. So is that like I become 50, like three months after November? I don't know. Wait, that's that's not how it works. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how it all works. But my friend Charles yesterday is like, I think you're overthinking the age thing. Like, it's just nobody cares. Just doesn't matter. Like, whatever. Just just keep keep hustling. Um, I don't know. And that and that's my great question. It's like, what would give me joy? Like, if I do the if you know if I focus on this podcast for ten years and then I become a popular podcaster, is that going to give me joy? But I mean, does anything give anybody joy? I think that's like you were saying, the pandemic kind of. I don't know. It made me realize, yeah, I mean, I can sit here and complain like, oh, I should have been a professor or I wish I had, uh, you know, why didn't I do comedy every day for the past 30 years? And I r ruined my potential and all this. Like I was listening to Kathy Heller today and she was talking about how. Was she interviewing Kelly Clark? No, she was watching Kelly Clarkson's show and Kelly Clarkson was saying that, um, you know, when she was a kid, a choir leader was really tough on her and made her cry. But because the choir leader saw her potential. And then I started getting mad because I was listening to this on my jog. I'm like, I had an improv teacher tell me after my first uh, round of improv classes, he took me aside and said, listen, I never tell anybody this, but you have, really have a gift for this. You should really pursue this. But, and I did. I mean, I took the Second City Conservatory, but I just never continued. I, it didn't occur to me that, hey, you can audition every year for the main stage, or why don't I just keep doing it every year? Like, I just, it's so easy to get kind of lazy and look back and go, oh, how did I just waste the past 20 years? Um, but at the same time, you can go, okay, well, there's this, um, musical theater star, I guess maybe he's 42 or something, uh, 
from Canada, but in LA, he got COVID and he had his leg amputated and then died. I'm like, okay, well, you know, so things, bad things happen. Or Chadwick Bosman, like early 40s, dies of cancer, even though he was top Hollywood star. So it's like, everybody's got their crap, right? <laughs> so maybe you just keep mm-hmm. bustling. And I don't know, I, I try to look at people that are kind of like, you know, my age or older, like Gary Vee's a few years younger, but still a grown up and he seems to have fun. Um, you know, Bill Maher is older and he's got no kids, but he seems to have fun with prostitutes a lot, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, Tony Robbins just turned 60, but he's got a new kid and he's very rich. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping I could get very rich. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but I made a million dollars a few years ago. I put 70 grand into a stock, went up four times, then another stock went up three times. And I'm like, oh, now I got like like over a million dollars. And But I got greedy. I'm like, no, no, they're going to cure cancer. It'll keep going up. And it went down. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, if I just hold, held on to that million dollars, I could have put that into something, make 10% a year and live off that forever and then keep growing. But the James Altucher thing, his thing is that he's made millions and lost them several times, like eight times gone broke and made millions. So it's like, there's no point in looking back and going, oh, I should like just just keep moving, keep moving forward. I told my sister today, I'm like, I'm gonna make a million dollars today, and she's like, good for you. And then uh, <laughs> she's like, I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, well, she tries to be supportive. And then uh, you know, I ch- opened my email and I had a PayPal payment from a voice website that I did a voice gig for for seven hundred forty nine dollars U.S. and that's worth almost a thousand Canadian. So and now he's doing the, the the dog sound the movement again, and. Uh, <laughs> Whoop, whoop. What is that guy's name? Ugh, I'm cheating. Whatever. You know who I'm talking about? The, the buddy in, in America, coming to America, the other guy. Oh, Arsenio Hall. Yeah, the Arsenio Hall show. All right. Phew, thank you for that. Side, side track. There was, um, I met this girl years and years ago in LA. I think she found me on my, like my video about eco stuff. Oh yeah, I made a love, uh, a love song to uh, Lori David. Actually, this might even be for the rap song when I just made a little video proposing to her. She's like Larry David's ex-wife and environmentalist. And uh, and this woman was making a website about recycling bride's dresses to help the environment. And she wrote to me and I went up meeting up with her in L.A. Um, and then I, I, I made her mad or something. I think I tweeted to her about a date or something or a dating site or something. She's like, well, I'm, I'm engaged to a guy. You shouldn't be talking about things like that. Got something to do with me- made her mad. I sh- yeah, that's not the point of the story. Okay, just before that, we were in a hotel, <laughs> we were in a hotel and, uh, and I, she took me to like a party on a roof. And in the, in the elevator, we met some young kid who's like, hey, I'm Snoop Dogg's nephew or something, and you should come party with us or something. And that was it. I don't think we ever saw him again. And then I found her on Clubhouse recently or something. We were messaging, and, uh, or I, and I texted her, and she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember we met Snoop Dogg's nephew or something. And I was like, yeah, whatever happened to that kid? So I looked, I Googled Snoop Dogg's nephew, and it turns out he apparently like he'll he'll mentor these young kids and he calls them all his nephew. So they're all his nephews. So that's probably what it was. <laughs> that, that, and now I kind of understand. I don't know <laughs> what the point is. So it's like a mystery that was solved many years later. Um, what's the point of that? Oh, yeah. Because Arsenio Hall and we were talking about Snoop Dogg earlier. I don't know. Um, what was I talking? Oh, yeah. So anyway, so then I got that email about the money and I messaged my sister back and I said, look, I made a thousandth of a million dollars already. Uh, oh, I only have to do this like 999 more times today. And I'm, I'm set with my millions. And she's like, good, you've manifesting all the money, manifest all the money. But even she's doing stuff that I didn't realize she's got. Uh, I sort of saw recently. I'm like, what is this thing she's tweeting about in her story? And turns out she was doing haiku poems to sort of uh, just for therapy for herself to make herself feel good, but people started liking them, so she made her own Instagram about her haiku, uh, haikus by Naomi, and then she made her own. Uh, she started a community like for people to write haikus called Hello Ku, like H E L L A O O. So it's like yeah, so it's kind of, and and so she'll give a prompt every day, and everybody writes their comments with their poem, and then some of them she'll turn into graphics or something, and she's. Yeah, reading books on how to monetize that or how to make merchandise or whatever. And I'm like, oh, so I, I throw it advice every now and then. She's like, no, no, no I got it under control. I'm like, okay. So, you know, I, I should just, I got to focus on my own thing. I remember for you, even when I had a girlfriend in my early 20s, I kept telling her, you got to do stand up. You got to stand. She's like, I don't want to, I don't want to. And she eventually did it and she was good and liked it, but I don't think she ever did it again. And then I told her, you got to take improv. She's like, I don't want to. But then she did and she loved it, but she didn't pursue it. But what I should have been doing is just 
you know, it's, it, I think when people are pushing you to do something, it's probably something they want to do, but they're too lazy to do it. So they're like, oh, you should do stand. I'm like, why am I not doing stand up? Why the hell am I trying to push other people? Wouldn't it be easier to push myself? So, yeah, so I got to shut up about that and stop telling people to start a podcast and just do my own podcast kind of thing. And as this, uh, you know, if I get into this for four years and have 400 interviews, am I going to feel fulfilled? Am I going to feel like, yes, this was all worth it? Hey, that depends on you, my man. Heck, well, you may I, I, get to it and you realize, hey, maybe I should. <laughs> I think I'll just take a break now and just maybe go off to a mountain somewhere. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I feel great doing it. But I'm not saying that's everybody's steez. So, I mean, yeah. like the thing is, like, it, kind of like we said earlier, sometimes you have to start and just see how it goes and see how far you can take it. Sometimes you just have to ask yourself, how far can I go with this as opposed to how long it'll take? Yeah. I'll have to think about that one and let that sit in for a while later. Uh, but yeah, I interviewed a woman a few days ago and her project is called Finish It and she teaches people how to finish projects. And then she's like, you know, like a while ago I was training for 10K and then it was the day before the race and then I decided, eh, I don't want to do this. And she didn't do it. I'm like, didn't do it? What? But she's like, yeah, but sometimes finishing it can be just not doing it anymore. Get it off your plate and go do something else. So that can definitely, because I mean, I've got things on my to-do list that clutter up my mind all the time. And at some point you go, you know what? It's been on the to-do list for 20 years. Maybe you're not going to... <laughs> Whatever it is. just like start fresh um you know so okay okay yeah and i mean at the same time we don't want everybody to do a podcast because we need audiences so we don't want all the competition like at least doing a podcast is still kind of i mean there's at least a million or probably millions of podcasts but it's not as many as like youtube pages or something because there's a bit more of a barrier to entry because you gotta you know know how to record it and then uh you know, maybe pay for hosting if it's not a free hosting thing. And so it's just, I mean, it even took me 10, two days to figure this out. And, and I'm sort of average intelligence. And so it's, uh, you know, so there's it's less competition. So it's still a good thing to do if you want to get discovered, I guess. Um, but still, I mean, who's making money from this? Not a lot of people, but you do it for the love. I mean, again, I could have been watching Netflix for an hour, but I talked to you for an hour. And now people around the world can hear this if they want. So it's like, how is that a waste of time, even if it never makes any money, right? Like, it's it's still pleasurable. And, you know, I probably never would have run into you otherwise. And I wouldn't have called, you know, messaged you and said, hey, you want to sit and talk for an hour? It's like, no, I don't even want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 are, what, what are either of us getting out of this? Like, I, that's the funny thing. Like, even when I talk to my friends now, I'm like, we should record this. Because otherwise, what's the point? Like, I mean, of course I should. I should. But I think that's why I broke up with my last girlfriend 10 years ago. Every time we would start having an interesting political discussion in the car or something, I'm like, oh, my God, can I record this? She's like, no, why can't you just be with me and appreciate me? And I'm like, but it was it was because and I read somebody recently say that when you're in love with someone, you want to share it with the world. And I'm like, maybe that's what it was. Like, I just love talking to her. And and, and uh, you know, I wanted to share all her wisdom and, and show off our great conversations. But she took it as like, oh, you're just everything has to be about getting it out there and getting fame. And you don't want to just be with me. And now she's married with kids with someone else anyways, and I'm alone and childless. So, you know, I, maybe that'll be my stand-up act. I think that's what I was thinking. I would be like, listen, I could stand up here for seven minutes and be funny, but that's not going to, you know, change your life or benefit you in any way. So what I'm going to do is just give you some advice. Probably most of you here are younger than me. And so I will tell you, if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend right now, lock them down. It does not get any better. Uh... You know, when you get to 48, I don't care what you look like now. You're going to look exactly like me, male or female. This is what it looks like. So, uh, well, you're not laughing. So maybe I won't do this routine. Yeah, because I'm like, so women have to expect baldness at 49? Is that what you're saying? That's the <laughs> joke. It's comedy. <laughs> it's, uh, remind me not to invite you to my shows. I <laughs> uh, there will be dead silence. And then I just be like, see you in the audience. Put up your hand. So women are going to go bald. It's like, it's up. Uh, forget it. Forget it, Dom. Mr. Literal. It's, it's, all right. Well, you're a librarian. It's a librarian. Right? There you go. You ever make any friends in the library? Do people come in? They're like, hey, you're Dom. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's never the, never the people you want to be talking to. Oh, it's. It's, it's sometimes it's like bartending. They tell you all your woes and their life stories, and they, it's like TMI Central. It's like, hey, my, yeah. my child's acting up in school. Okay, that's normal. 
oh, hey, I'm going to get uh, my tubes tied today. Like, hey, what? Huh? What? Huh? No, no, I don't need to know that. <laughs> See you, Ma. See you, Ma. I'm good, fam. <laughs> so how about this book? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me uh, get your book on tubes tying. There, there you go. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, that's, they, they love you. And that's, and you know, if they're people like me and don't have somebody to talk to, like I, uh, I was getting a subway the other day. I made a little Instagram reel about this because I thought, oh, I'm going to get the pizza melt. I've never got the pizza melt, but I'm going to make it more like a pizza because I love pizza. So rather than getting lettuce on it, I'm, I would never put lettuce on a pizza. I'll get spinach because I've had spinach on a pizza and I'll put the olives on, but I wouldn't put pickles on a pizza. So I won't put that on. And I just told the woman as she's making it, I'm like, I'm getting the ingredients that would only be on a pizza. And she's like, just didn't even just, I, you know, it's possible she didn't hear me through the mask and the glass mirror thing and the, or the protector thing. But she probably didn't care as well. Uh, and so that was my reel. And then people say, like, oh, don't be mean to her. And I'm like, no, and I'm not being mean to her. I'm making fun of myself for, for caring about my pizza ingredients and for thinking anybody else would care. That was kind of the self-deprecating joke. But, but yeah, everywhere I go, you know, like waitresses, I'm like, oh, I want to tell you my life story. And they, they got to smile and be nice and stuff. But it's tough for me. Like anybody I meet anywhere, I feel like I just become attached to them. Like I saw this woman sitting with a bunch of rowdy homeless guys who started when a guy started hitting his horn on a bike that was super loud and damaging my hearing. And then him and I were yelling at each other and the woman's and I stormed off and was like, come back. I'm sorry. Like, I apologize. And, and now I feel bad. I, I I've been heading back to that place every day, hoping I'll see that woman sitting there again. So I can just say, it's okay. I'll be your friend. But now I realize even my friends, I never see again. Like, you know, all my friends from university that I thought, Oh, we're going to have a lifetime of meeting up all the time and sharing these memories. I'm like, I haven't seen anybody at all. And my one friend, Luik, that I visited in Europe when I was 20 and haven't really seen him since, um, he was messaging on Facebook. He's like, get off your phone, get off the computer. You're, you're ridiculous filming everything. You've got to go and go walk through the mountains and, and find yourself. I'm like, yeah, but it's not gonna advance. I'm not going to become Tony Robbins that way. I don't know, man. <laughs> you're right. Maybe I'll go hit the mountains. All right. Well, we're almost at the hour mark. That's a pretty good length of our podcast. How, lo- how long are yours usually? Eh, hour is good. Hour is good. I'm all good for an hour. Too sweet to be sour. <laughs> no, that's okay. See, that's a good rap song. But but I mean, how, you do your own podcast. Do you set a time for the interviews, or is it like what are the lengths that you normally would host your own show for? It it varies from guest to guest. The average across the board for the whole show is around a good 39 minutes because some 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 episodes have gone to like a good hundred. Six, actually, eighty minutes. Some have been eighty minutes, and some have been twenty. So, <laughs> yeah, and I've done the same. Like at the beginning, when I was interviewing people, yeah, we'd sit there for an hour and a half on Skype. But I mean, at some point, I mean, it doesn't even matter if you're talking to Elon Musk. It's you know, you might as well cut it off. Like, who wants to? Li- who's going to listen to anything for an hour and a half? And then, uh, like, I don't know how Joe Rogan does three hours. Like, I mean, you could spend your whole life listening to his podcast but who's going to do that? very strange um and some people like the the finish it woman or or maybe the, the musician yesterday we just you know i was like half an hour that's a good time and even at half an hour today i was like okay we could end it but you know we're still talking so we'll see and i'm like okay let's push it to an hour um but yeah so maybe i guess it doesn't matter it's like again it's like just do it like if people don't want to listen for an hour they don't have to we're not this isn't a tv thing where it's got to fit the time slot or whatever so but, you know, maybe I'm OCD and I'm like, oh, i got to hit the exact 60-minute mark. We're at 58.14 now, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm just, I'm just rambling on. Okay, so if people want to find you, I guess, what do you, do you give them your social media? Or you, just, you drive everybody to dombrightman.com and then they go to your, uh, you know, get on your newsletter and all that. Yep, best place, dombrightman.com. Here's to respond to most emails, indeed, unless you're trying to recruit me for some random MLM company. Nothing oh. against them. Just not a fan of them. <laughs> but no, yeah, no. Just, ch- just check out DomBreitman.com. I'm on most social media websites like the Instagrams, the LinkedIn's, the Facebooks, the YouTubes. No dating sites. Funny enough, I had a guest yesterday. He's like, yeah, I'm on all the social media websites, but I'm not on the dating websites. And I'm like, you know what? He's got a point because dating sites can kind of count as social media because you're being social with people. <laughs> they do and that's the thing like uh and i you know that was i don't know because i mean often when i would be on tinder i would like be like hey add me to instagram we can chat there or facebook or you know because you know i post all my stuff about my life and i just realized i think i'm saying you know a lot and i hate when people do that on podcasts i'm like you gotta learn to, you'd probably learn to get rid of that in toastmasters um 
But uh, I guess maybe somebody must have reported me for spam or a lot of times they would just say, oh, you're just promoting yourself. I'm like, no, I'm not promoting. I don't need follow. Like, I just, I'm just showing you who I am. Like, this is check me out. But uh, they must report me because I've been banned from Tinder and OkCupid <laughs> and, and Bumble. Because so, somebody was just asking me today on this inner, inner circle app. She's like, oh, you, you know, how do you feel about this app? And I'm like, she's like, you're on all the platforms. I'm like, well, I can't get on the other ones now. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people could use it for social media. And, and But now I'm trying, I figure, okay, you know what, I'll, if I can just get my message out there with a podcast and on social media, maybe the right woman will find me that way rather than swiping. Um, I had one other story about what you were just talking about. Oh, yeah, the emails. Like, yeah, and if you even go on that Shaper app, it's all people with their MLM or Forex nonsense. Um, but I made the mistake. I've been so lonely lately. Like, I've been replying to spam emails. Like, I get a lot for, every time I post looking for web developer on Facebook, I didn't realize, but they're sort of scraping for that kind of info and that's why everybody from India is messaging me with, oh, I will help you with SEO or your website. But then even like these, I am a Russian woman and uh, I think, whatever. So I, I made the mistake of replying to one of these. Just be like, okay, add me to Facebook. Like just on the one billionth chance that she actually is a, <laughs> a beautiful woman just who came across my email address randomly. And then that, so she's been emailing me, she has been emailing me back, you know, from some weird email address like, you know, Ivan at legalissues.com, Russia, whatever. And, uh, and it won't stop. And so every, every now and then I'll say, well, just add me to Facebook. No, I cannot. Uh, I don't have enough data in this cafe, but please send me $300 and I can get my passport and come visit you. And the, so she just emails every single day now. Hello, Josh, you have not replied. And so I feel I, I should not have. <laughs> that's the problem. So I've started saving them in a folder called spam to make a video about, because I thought this would be hilarious to make a video about this. But now it's like, I'm hitting my Gmail limit and I'm like, I need to delete emails. And it's now a choice between do I delete old emails from relatives I cared about or do I save all these spam emails from Russia? Uh, I might have to start a new Gmail address and like it's, it's ruined my life responding to the spam. So you're right. Don't reply to any of those. And if you're a spamming Dom, don't. Um, cause, <laughs> but spam me because I need the attention, I guess is my point. <laughs> um, that could be so, a t-shirt. Heck, maybe that could be a whole podcast, actually. Spam me because I need the attention. <laughs> oh, my God. I like it. Yeah. Well, I was reading yesterday. I was watching a, a YouTube video, but this kid was showing um, how to make like graphics for a t-shirt. Like You can go to this site where you just have different fonts, and it'll automatically make it a thing that you can then drag onto a t-shirt making site. And I'm like, oh, I could do that. So maybe that's my saying. Spam me. I need the attention. And, uh, you know, and it's by sparkthegenius.com. But also at Josh Rackless because I go by both names and you can be whatever. All right. Uh, and yeah, well, I'll, I should take notes. That. I should get a transcript of this show later and then I can you know, go back and, and actually maybe just use some of that for my stand up. Because that's what they in stand up class two, we would just do like a one minute riff on something. And just whatever we said about the topic, we could go back and look at where the little laughs were and stuff. And, and I could go back and even listen to where you laughed at my things. And I know you didn't like some of my you know, the, the bald ladies, but, uh, but, you, <laughs> but, but you like spam me. I need the attention actually. And that's the thing. That's what I learned about my jokes too. Cause a lot of my stand up last year, it's always been like these long stories. Like I would talk for three minutes to get to the point that, Oh, uh, I, I don't know why I, I, I want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's friend. And, and his, his wife becomes friends with pe comedians, but he won't because guys don't do that. And uh, I won't, I don't want to be your friend because you're a loser and you live in your pants <laughs> basement. But it took like five minutes to get to that point. But now I would shorten my jokes now to just be like, uh, I, I respond to spam emails because I need the attention. And like, boom, there you go. It's a TikTok video. <laughs> All right. That's this, your whole series. <laughs> back, we'll see. Yeah. All right. Well, then you. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll start that and, and we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, thank you, Dom. Did you say you're not you're big on social media? Like, are you on Facebook and Instagram and that? Yep. I'm on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagrams, the LinkedIn's. Yep, yeah. Yeah. I'm on those. OK, so people can look you up there. And, and I think what I'll start doing is telling people just go to my website because that way you get the Google hits and and then they can find it rather than saying go directly because then you're just giving Mark Zuckerberg money. Like it's like, no, no, come to my website, get on my newsletter. You got to have the newsletter because then you control it. And if you get. My God, like April 8th, because I remember this day because it, it was like the apocalypse for me. I, I, at some point at night, I was looking at my phone and then boom, Facebook gone. And it's like you have 30 days to download all your stuff. You're gone forever. Like, lost my mind. I'm like, I've Why? been on. The I don't know. Never found out. It came back 24 hours later. But those 24 hours, I was like rethinking everything in my life. Like, uh, you know, I spent 
15 years posting every day on this thing. It's all gone, all my contacts. Mm. And uh, it looks like, like once I looked it up, there was tons of people saying they lost their profile. So I don't know if it was, there was something with their system that they were just shutting things down and then bringing it back. I was emailing Mark Zuckerberg on, like, on LinkedIn or Instagram. Like I was losing my mind. But it made me realize how much control these people have, right? Any day they could decide, oh, you spam someone, your profile's gone. Now you're, all your contacts are gone. You never get in touch with anyone. So I feel like, yeah, for sure I should have an email list so I can just email people my stuff. Yep. And, and then also um, even some kind of record. Like if I was writing in a blog every day, and then at least I would own the blog. So if Facebook takes it away, it's like, well, I've got my blog. But that's extra work to have to go to a WordPress and type in every picture and stuff. So I don't know if I'll do that. But, yeah, it's pretty scary to put all your eggs in the Instagram and Facebook basket because, wow, in one second that you're gone. And then maybe someday they'll shut down. Like, you know, I spend a lot of time on MySpace. It's not even there anymore. So, ah, whatever. But, but yeah, it's all, we can just go back to the library and books are always there. All right. Well, thanks. And I'll get this uploaded and, uh, and have a good Friday, my friend. You too, Joe. Stay encouraged, man. All right. Bye.